Hi, I'm Ben Hauptman. And I'm Janet Hauptman. We're visiting from Simi Valley, California. We love to watch Aline's Creative Living on the Nashville Network. Every day. Welcome to Aline's Creative Living, where we have a full hour of crafts every day. On today's show, we're going to create designer backgrounds for cards, gift wrap, and so much more. And we have a unique way to join Granny Squares to create an easy afghan. We'll discover a new tool for making coiled wire beads. And we're going to turn trash to treasures with a brand new book from Leisure Arts. Patty and I will share some creative solutions, so now you'll know what to do with all those Christmas cards that you receive every year. And Tony's here to explain the value of a craft club membership. We are starting today off with a holly jolly wreath that is perfect for decorating the outside of your home. Catherine, let's get the show on the road. <laughs> you've been looking for an idea that maybe you can hang on your front door that's weatherproof and really cute, this is a great idea. Now, Sabrina, this is a cute little wreath you brought us today. Oh, thanks. I thought it would be a, a real fun one for putting out on your fence or on your gate in front of your house. And even mm -hmm. if you wanted to make multiples, it'd be real quick and easy to do really that. Really good idea. Now, I like it, too, that it is absolutely, like you say, weatherproof. It can snow, it can sleet, or anything <laughs> it wants to on this wreath, and it'll still look just the very same. <laughs> That's because it's made with the, the Aline satin sheen. Uh-huh. And... Um, are you going to show us how to do this? <laughs> I am. I've got a big piece right here that's already been untwisted. All right. And that's what we started with. Uh, the base is a straw reed, uh -huh. and we had some of the, the little floral pins. Oh, yes. And when you first start off, you want to just bunch up the end of it and start, start mm -hmm. making poofs. Poofs. Oh, <laughs> I see that. Just pin the end. And get it going. You want to go in all different directions. Okay. And get the end down nice and tight. And then just start poofing. I see. And you can kind of determine the size of it by, you know, how full you want it. Uh-huh. And you don't have to fill the whole thing solid the first time because you're going to mix in two different colors of green. Oh, okay. And you just start going. Whether you want it to be um, mm -hmm. intermixed like this or you could do... All the dark color on the outside with the lighter on the oh, inside. Oh, okay. However okay. you wanted to do it. It makes it look more like it's actually uh, greenery, doesn't it? Yeah, and you can, after you get it on, you have quite a bit of room for adjustment. You can you can uh -huh. change them around. Well, this stuff kind but of moves around real well, doesn't it? It does, and it holds however you leave it. It, it That's stays the way it's there. Going to yeah. stay. But then it moves again real easy. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just set this one off to the side here. All right. And I have one that I did all of the, the background green Ooh, on. Nice. Nice. And you can just adjust it however you want. Okay. And what I did with the the braided trim uh -huh. was just cut uh, the red, green, and white satin sheen in the the lengths that you want. Right. And then I just shred it off about a about a quarter width mm -hmm. of each one. And you could adjust that to however oh, bold okay. you want your braid to show right. up. And so then, you made it smaller so that your braid is smaller. Yeah. And then I just. Uh, with the glue gun, hot glued the end and just braided it just like you would braid hair or I whatever. I see. That is neat. And, um, it is almost looks like candy, doesn't it? it or does. like licorice. <laughs> it looks, looks good. <laughs> and then for the flowers, the little poinsettias, mm -hmm. it's just small sections of the satin sheen. And mm -hmm. you can make different size ones. So you have a lot of different size buttons right. to use. And um, just cut, just slight little curves okay. out of your satin sheen. And they don't have to be anything real, you Ex know. Exact. <laughs> right. 
just like with this. This is so clever. Now we've got a great kit today. I noticed that it has a lot of buttons. This is so <laughs> fun. Lot. Now there are just way more buttons than you're going to use for this wreath. So let's think of some other things we could do with that. You can do, you a do with those? a whole wreath with buttons. It yeah. looks like with that you can fill up the whole thing. You really could. Now with the wreath you get the four colors of satin sheen so you're really set to make this wreath today. Now maybe you could put those all maybe uh, on the front of a sweater or something, or okay. use them for all kinds of craft projects. But I, I just want to play with them, Sabrina. <laughs> <laughs> These are cool. All right, okay. show me how that you made those uh, we just, poinsettias. Just take each little petal, put a little bit of your hot glue on there, and just scrunch them and glue on the back of the button. Oh, and neat. you can do however many, however many petals you want on there. Okay. I always do an odd number. That's Yeah. I've heard that's a rule. Odd yes. numbers always look better. It does usually. <laughs> and just keep going around. Um, once they were done, you I did three. You can mm -hmm. do whatever number you like to put on there. You could put them all all the way spaced around or right. group them like I did. Okay. And then I just also glued the the braid. Just started Put a little bit of glue on the back, and okay. then started wrapping. And okay. you could, you could make it as as sparse or as close together as you would like. Okay. To get your end result there. How pretty! And then you just put these up there on top of it and That's glue right. them on. And the hot glue holds it just fine, oh, doesn't great. it? Oh, great! Yeah. All right. Well, a great idea. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming by and seeing us today and bring us a cute project, it Serena. It was fun. Thank you. I can't wait to wrap you up in a rainbow of color. Do you have a colorful way to make a big impression? Oh, do I ever? <laughs> With these rainbow sponges are incredible. Now, can you see all of the looks and how colorful they are? You've created beautiful <sighs> background pages for box maker boxes, background Absolutely. colors or cards or banners or beautiful scrapbooking pages. Exactly. I mean, you can do this so quickly, just with this burst of color. It's a wonderful uh, way to personalize the colors that you love and the things that you enjoy creating. Just on a card surface, look at these finishes. Wow. They're, they've all come from this little innocent <laughs> sponge that is not a makeup wedge. Right. This is a really, real dense sponge, and we want to use it with dye inks rather than any pigment inks. Okay. Can I show you? <laughs> Dad. Now, what's new and exciting about the kit is we have needle nose re-inkers with dye base ink, and I just squirt them onto an edge. You can't even see the color of the ink, so you will be so surprised. And I just go along very, very easily and fast. I just, you know me in color. Now you Shoot. have a table full of things here. As I'm inking this, how how often am I gonna have to re-ink it? Oh, good question. Let me just give you a little demonstration because that can be answered at the same time. All right, I already have some color. This is dry, but why? You know, when we can spritz it with color. Right. So, stand back. I'll just get a little color with okay. my, this is just water. So this is straight pigment. Now you've added a little bit of water to exactly. it. Exactly. Now, look at this effect. <gasps> wow. <laughs> I mean, it's so quickly, and to repeat it. These now, are... you have to keep your hand out of the way. You'll be going at such rate. So I turn this card over and just hold it up kind of with a light part of my um, you know, or with my nails, and look. Oh, now it, it dries so quickly. It dries so quickly. Let's plaid it. Oh, to die for. Now, what about all the like swirls and shapes? How hard is oh, that? Oh, you can take and do swirls. Now, see, I'm running out of water, not ink, mm -hmm. but water. So I will spritz this again and get another color combination. And go up. Now see, it's real creamy now. Really juicy now. Okay, and now this it's is ready kind to go. of a you know, a flame look, a, you know, like an interior design. 
I like this just for color therapy, oh, but imagine oh, the posters and the banners and the scrapbooking pages you can create with this. Now, scrapbooking pages, mentioning that. Okay, I already inked this up. Let's get a little color on it and let's do a bigger surface just with a wide thing across. Like, look at this, Catherine. Beautiful. Oh, for so album really, pages. Any combination of colors that you want to use to create your beautiful designs. Oh my Ooh, gosh. Look at that. <laughs> What you can do with that this could be Hawaii tool. with your Hawaiian <laughs> pictures. <laughs> this is great. It is more fun. And then sometimes I just pull an edge. We have an edge here, and I can do a card with just edges. Now, or Dee, I can crisscross. Dee, I have to ask you about this. How often do I need to re-ink this, or, or how long will this sponge last me? Do you know, I could leave this here for a week. Spritz it again with water and continue. But every time I add water, it's going to get more pale and more pale, Ooh. more pastel. And sometimes we like pastels. Sure. I mean, I don't very much, but so I love bright. Could I, use, <laughs> could I use another edge for this? Yes. And, you know, we designed this so that you could have several edges. In fact, even one for writing. And that's been a favorite. Let's get a long uh, strip and spritz this little edge to write with. If you write calligraphically... You can do this. So spritzing it just kind of wakes up the color so oh. that you can play with it. Wow. Now, we do have a kit today. This is so exciting. Dee, tell us about the All kit. All right. In the kit, you get this incredible sponge with the three edges. You get six wonderful needle no nose re-inkers in the floral brights and all kinds of instructions and ideas. Okay, well, I want you also to know that available open stock, we do have some earth tone colors, so you have a whole variety, as well as two awesome videos by Dee Grunig. So you can have her in your own home, and she can teach you all this great stuff. Dee, you have wrapped us up in a rainbow today. Thank oh, you. It's been so much fun, as always. Are you ready for the holidays? Because if you aren't, we have got a great project for you today. Gloria Tracy is here, and you have got a beautiful project for the holidays. I sure do. And it's made of wind tuck with acrylan acrylic easy care fibers. So oh. it's got the best of everything. This is fabulous yarn. I've just been sitting here playing with it, Gloria, because it's so soft and the colors are so vibrant. Let's get over here to this project. Yeah, this is made with what um, we call a motif. A motif mm -hmm. are little individual uh, squares or octagons or shapes and then are attached together to form a larger, a larger piece. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the most common forms of putting together an afghan, for instance. Yes. Uh, but there is one thing that everybody hates about motif afghans. Can you have any idea what it is? Well, I'm going to guess it's the putting it together you when you've got, got all those little oh. squares hanging out what everywhere. What a bright perceptive woman you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, they're nice because you can, it's, it's small and you can carry them around, but then when you're faced with that stack of, of squares yes. and motifs to put together at the end, <laughs> So what I've got to show you today are, is two things. One of them is how to put all these little squares together as you go. Oh, uh -huh. great idea, Gloria. <laughs> the other thing is that you end up with tails, two uh -huh. tails for every a starting and a beginning for every one. Right. So I'm going to show you two things. You, you can't get away from having one of them, the end one. Mm -hmm. However, I'm going to show you how to hide one of the two tails and how to hook these together as you go. Oh, goody. Are you ready? I think I'm all ready. Right, let's go. <laughs> Uh, this can you see this little square right here yes. and the way that's made is starting with a chain four hooking it together with a slip stitch then the, the square is formed with sets of three double crochets with a chain three in each corner okay that's the the format of the square and I've started one here I've got my center ring I've got my chain three to form my first double crochet and yes. two double crochets now if I were going to make a square standing on its own I would chain three and go ahead and then put in my my next um, uh, three double crochets but in this case I'm going to chain just one of those three I'm going to come over here so that's going to end up laying right in there okay okay so I'm going to start by attaching it in the center of the chain three here All right. with a slip stitch. Okay. And then I'm going to continue to make my 
three double crochets. And while I'm making that double, the three double crochets, I've got, you see my starting tail here? Yes. I'm going to crochet right around that and, and hide that in. Uh -huh. That's the way I'm working in the tail as I go. So there's one, two, three. Okay. Now, if I were making the motif on its own, I would be ready to chain three, but I'm just going to chain one. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to attach it to this corner. This is a great idea, Gloria. Now, is this something unusual because I'm really not a crocheter? Um, it's, it's just... Uh, it's just another way of doing it. Now okay. I'll do my chain one. I chain one, attach there, chain mm -hmm. one, and I'll do my uh, the, th the third side of my uh, square. Um, it's been done in other in other things. I don't know if there's anything new in, in crochet right. or I knitting. That. Uh, it just is. Uh, it, it's it's. It's a different way than I've seen before. Mm -hmm. Whoops! I got my little red one caught in there too. Let's pull <laughs> that right out. <laughs> Um, you know, we're doing this in, in Christmas holiday colors, Patty, but this yes. could just as easily be done in Hanukkah colors or oh. Kwanzaa colors or colors to match the decor of your home. Yes. Okay, do you see I've gotten it attached to one corner, two mm. corners. Now I'm going to attach it to the third corner. Okay. Get, better get my yarn out on top first. <laughs> <laughs> that was a test. <laughs> I bet all of our, our viewers caught that. Chain one, and then I'll finish the the last three, mm -hmm. and there that ah, is. Ah, perfect. You know, I would love this maybe in just soft colors like the white and ecru, and maybe a, a taupe mixed together. Yes, if you if you choose one main color like black or, or a deep red, the mm -hmm. red that you're holding mm -hmm. can serve as a main color. You can, and if you match their values, you can use up all kinds of little odds and ends oh, uh, leftovers. Too. Great idea. Beautiful afghan. Ha! Thank you for being you're here welcome. today. <laughs> the instructions for the mini granny square afghan are featured in the November issue of Aline's Creative Living magazine. Coming up next, Juliana will be here with Twisted and Curled Wire. Need a new use for your old foam-backed placemats? Use them to create pattern pieces and templates for your favorite crafts. Now we're not going to twist and shout, but we're going to twist and curl, aren't we? We're not. Oh, I was looking forward to having some really great fun. But you know what? With the twist and curl yes. and artistic wire, square wire, it's brand new. Yes. Oh, we will be twisting. We'll, well be we, having so much fun. Let's talk about this great necklace, Juliana. Ooh. This is to die for. This is so cool. This is really neat. This is a complex bead made on the twist and curl. And this is our Mardi Gras bead because it's so festive and fun. Yes. And we have uh, Donna Nova to thank for actually inventing the twist and curl tool. Really? And of course, artistic wire for all their fabulous wire, all the different gauges and sizes. And, and this is a great day because is. this is square wire. We've never played with this before. Well, that drives me crazy. I never heard I, of square <laughs> wire, but you know, the more I play with it, the more I understand it. This curly idea is just marvelous. Oh, it's so neat. And you know, I just, I want to get into this demo because okay. we are going to make a twist and curl bead, a simple bead mm -hmm. on our twist and curl tool with our square All wire. Right. I want to see okay. you do this. So what we want to do is take this wonderful little tool right here. There's a hole in the handle. So you can actually see that right there. Yes. And then that's where you'll put the tip of the wire. Okay. And I'm just going to insert my red, or actually I've got the magenta. You Ooh, took the red. I did take the red. So I put the wire in there and I just let it sneak out a little and then I turn it over and then place the wire on the other side of the dowel here, mm -hmm. and then guiding it with my pincher fingers and my thumb, I'm just going to start to twist. Now you want to keep those coils together, and if you roll over each other, that's okay. You can undo them, and then you want to squish them in so that your coil is nice and tight. Mm -hmm. And let's oh. see, I've been doing this for a while. This so takes great gonna... concentration for me. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's oh, fun. It is fun. You know, I'm getting a little nervous, though. This reminds me of the orthodontics office. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, <laughs> they hey. don't give me these prettier wires they either, sure Juliet. I think I'll call them. But you could see that this square wire just fits next to each other. All these little coils, they're just snug and tight, and you have such a clean right. line. And it started off round, but it went through a process, a square tool machine, where it actually made the round wire square. Yes. So it's a very unique <laughs> wire. This is fun. And yeah, you have to be careful. Don't take your eyes off. <laughs> <laughs> You'll want to make your coil. Each coil could be a different size. And so you may want to stop right there. Oh, or, really? Actually, I think I'm going to go a little bit further. You could go all the way down the dowel and make uh -huh. a really big bead. It's all practice, so okay. after you use it a few times, you'll be able to make small beads, large beads. You'll know exactly what you want. <laughs> so at this point, yes. I'm going to take my coil off of the dowel here. All right. I'm going to snip the bottom, okay, and then the magic is going to begin. Leave this piece on there. Now I'm going to take my second color. By all means, if you wanted a um, one solid bead, you could do that too. Actually, uh -huh. let's back up here. See, I get so excited. Okay. Take that coil and string it onto your second color or the one, whatever color it is that you want to use. Okay, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. <laughs> Put that into the dowel again, same thing. Wrap it over, and then we are going to make. Oh my goodness! Oh, I'm just going to You're go around. You're making me crazy. I'm I can't sorry. keep that. I'm sorry. I'll give you a private <laughs> lesson afterwards. Okay. All right. How's that? <laughs> okay. So then, on this step, I'm only going to give it like a half an inch of a coil. Again, each one will be different according to the size of the bead uh -huh. that you ultimately want to make. I'm going to snug this coil up, twist these two ends together. And then I'm going to help guide that coil around. Oh, and here's where the magic comes. Look at. Oh, my God. See what's happening here? I, I, I want to do that. I know. <laughs> and then using the two colors, you get that second color that just beats right through your coil. So then at the end, you want to give it as many coils as you did in the beginning. So let's see. Where's my half an inch? Okay. <laughs> and then I'm going to clip these off and always remember when you're cutting the wire uh -huh. that you cover the wire up, the little pieces with your hand because you don't want any accidents. Right. And we have a wonderful Get Acquainted kit. It yes. includes the twist and curl tool. It includes five uh -huh. yards of square wire, magenta, red, black, green, Whoa. and bare copper. And there's an open stock kit so there's plenty more square wire that you can purchase. Thank you. <laughs> And look I got at that. mine done too. Look at that. And you know what? Oh, can we just look at what you can do? You can actually oh, cover Juliana. it with a beautiful bead. Isn't this great? Yes, beautiful. I can't wait to do this again. This okay. is so easy it and is. so much fun. Way cool. Thank you so much for being here. All right. Thanks to Artistic Wire. All right. <laughs> we have a full day of crafting planned for you, so let's get going with the second half hour of our show. We'll crack open the newest book in the popular Trash to Treasure series. We'll share creative solutions for reusing Christmas cards. And Tony will be here to let us in on some secrets about the craft club. But first, it's time for today's sharing. We have two emails from women that are very creative. They took an idea and they added their own little alterations and flair to it. Let me read you this letter. This is from Margaret Pickett from Kokomo, Indiana. She says, in the July issue, I liked the Totes for Tot project. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. We have a copy of our magazine. Okay. And this was a project that it's kind of a, a pillow and you can store some supplies and toys in it. Mm -hmm. Well, she said she couldn't find it at the craft keeper. Well, we, we can give you the phone number where you can find that. And she decided to change things a bit. I guess you could call my alterations totes for nap time. Aww. She had some material with little bears on it, and then she just put batting and sewed around it, left a little place where you could put a blanket inside, and it mm -hmm. says it was so fast and easy and cute, my grandson could hardly wait to play to go to play school the next day and have <laughs> nap time so he could show off his nap, nap time tote to all of the other kids at school. Oh, she says, I think this would be a great seller for others to have at craft sales and all kids that have to take blankets and pillow to play school or kindergarten, this way was so easy. Then she says, I really love your program. Keep up 
the good work your crafting sister, <laughs> Margaret Pickett. That's a great letter. That's a That's good idea. That's a great way to adapt with craft that you already know about and yes. then just make it change for what you need. We do that all the time. Yes. That's a great idea. What else you got? Well, this is from Cheryl Erickson, and she's from Ontario, Canada. It says, I want to share with you an idea that was spawned from your craft project, Friends Through Thick and Thin. Now, in this, it's kind of that um, you take a, like a spool of thread and you put nails on it and you, you, know, you make kind of a fun thing and you mm -hmm. do the crochet. Do you remember that you were right, talking about? Definitely. Well, she used the same idea, only her daughter, Stephanie, who was 12, made bracelets by using dental floss. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I love this part. She says it's going to be as colorful as the dental floss or the beads used to decorate it. Uh -huh. She said the result is an inexpensive, durable kids project and during the summer months the dental floss stands up well to swimming. That's brilliant <laughs> now. It's a great idea. Yes. Anyhow, so we think that Stephanie, you did a great job mm -hmm. and also Cheryl, your mom. Um, that's a fun idea. I love when you share things like that oh, with us because it, it does inspire other people to come up with mm -hmm. great ideas. And just because maybe you don't have a supply in a list, that's a great time to be really creative. And oh, definitely. Some of the best things I've ever done were done at 4 in the morning when the stores were closed <laughs> and I was out of something and I looked around, well, what can I use instead? Right. Some of my best projects have, have happened that me way. Me too, me too. Well, Patty, what are we doing next? Well, coming up next, all new ways to turn trash to treasure. Stay tuned. This is a creative way to capture those memories of childhood. Lauren, little girls grow up, but their hair bows stay around, don't they? That's right. You might have lots of just extra little pieces of ribbon around, whether it be from little girls' hair bows, whether it be from gift wrapping or doing crafts, things like that. All those little scraps, what a great way to reuse them. Just tie them in lots and lots of bows. Glue them on a frame you probably already have around the house. And look at what adorable frame you get. This is really irresistible. I love the concept of using things that are laying around the house mm -hmm. to come up with creative projects. Right, we are making treasures from trash with the new book from Leisure Arts, The Year's Best Creative Crafts. And there's over 125 new projects in there. Well, I'm very impressed by what I have seen so far. So what do you need to get started besides hair bows? <laughs> well, start with a frame. We're starting with a new frame, but you probably have a frame around the house that you've you know used before that you're tired of it might just be a real plain frame that you want to decorate okay mm -hmm. depending okay. on the frame now in our finished example we've got a wooden frame that we've used and put the picture in it now some pictures you may need to put the picture in first before you glue the bow on okay so it all depends on what type of frame you're using this is just a box frame you know this just slips out the back so we don't need to worry about you know, putting the picture in first, we can just go ahead and decorate it as it is, okay? Gather all your ribbons. That's the fun part. Just gather them all up. It doesn't matter how long or short they are. You can just play with it. And what you want to start with doing is putting long strips around each of the outside edges. Okay. Now, those are pretty much going to be covered up, but you may have a little excess space between the bows, and so that the frame itself won't show through, you cover it up with the ribbon. So just go ahead and get those cut. Or if we're going to put that one, I cut that. I'm yeah. helping you out here. I'm yeah, making little pick. bows with three if girls. You could I'm make good bows, at this. That would be great. And like I say, look at we're just using funky colors. It doesn't matter that they match because we're just using everything on there. Mm, very so cute. So then we just want to go ahead and glue those on. Use hot glue and just don't have to be neat about it because it's going to be covered up. Now I wouldn't suggest your kids do this with you because of the hot glue, but they can tie the bows. Sure. You know, real simply. Look at how fast I'm or doing this. Use, I am not taking. You could use other glues, like uh, thick designer sure. glue. Sure. Sure. Just be real careful if you're using the hot glue. So get all of your edges finished like that, and then just start gluing on bows. Set this one aside. And then here, you see oh, we've got it glued around our edges. So sweet. And this is one that I'm referring to where we want to get our picture in there first because of the fact once we get those bows on, we are not going to be able to get a picture in there. So let's set that there and let's get some bows going okay. here, Catherine. Well, here's a handful. Okay. I've been working. And the fun part is figuring out where you want to put them and you know which colors you want in there. And you can see how tight we've got them in there. So just apply a little glue to the bow. And then let's go down here. Again, pull up your little tails there and Put that on there, and then you just continue doing that all over the 
frame and you can start from another side and work your way in and just go on and on and on. Well, when you think about it, if you're using bows or ribbons left over from favorite outfits you've made for your daughter or favorite bows that match something, every bow in there is going to have a memory. That, so it's yeah. really a special project. That is. Wouldn't it be a great project to give to, like, Grandma or something, too? You know, have the little girl's bows in there and, you know, just... What a great memory, like you said. Well, so even, just continue to do that over and over and over again. If your kids are in sports, they usually have the colors of ribbons in their hair mm -hmm. that match their outfit, outfit, whether it's soccer or cheerleading or whatever. So, you know, this is a, it's a really fun, really fun project. And I guess you could buy a new ribbon if you wanted it specifically to be a certain color. Mm -hmm. But we like to recycle our ribbon. And I have so much left over from gift wrapping and things like that, scraps of ribbon, that it's just a super, super way to use it. Lauren, let's take a look at some of these other projects. Well, this is a wonderful project, and it's made with an old cigar box. Oh. We've made it into a lovely jewelry box. You would never know that that's what you started with. Didn't take many supplies. We've got some doilies and some ribbon and just some extra beads and buttons and things on there, and we've sprayed it and antiqued it just to make it look old and Victorian. Isn't it pretty? Mm -hmm. Things from around the house. Right. Now, speaking of around the house, this pillow is just beauteous. Beauteous! It is. It's <laughs> Beautiful. It's made with an old quilt. Now you may just have bits and pieces of quilts around. I wouldn't suggest you know cutting up oh, you know, sure. a new one, but you might just have parts of a quilt or parts of it have been destroyed. What a wonderful way to to remember that and make this into a beautiful pillow. I love it with the flap over. It. I have seen some at, at flea markets and thrift shops and right. such. This is a great book full of inspiring ideas. Thank you. You're welcome. We have some creative solutions today for you to use if you want to know what to do with last year's Christmas cards mm -hmm. or you want some fun ideas on ways to display this year's. Christmas cards are always abundant in my house, aren't they, at yes. yours? And you just can't stand to throw those things away. Well, they have so many beautiful pictures and they were sent with so much love. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a fun idea. This is beautiful. I think this is one of the most creative ways to use cards. Well, it's so simple. All you do is wrap it around a candle and then maybe tie it with a little bit of ribbon. Mm -hmm. Now that candle, Patty, I just actually put some hot glue on the back of the card. No kidding. And pressed it on and it's stuck. Now I, I wouldn't like want to burn that it. too low because it's such no. a tall uh, card. And but then this one's tied on with a ribbon. Yes. I like it. And then this is really glamorous. Well, I think so. And Definitely. you know, another fun thing that you can do with the cards is hang them up. The cards that you get this year, you might just want to take a pretty piece of gold string oh, or yeah. gold thread of some kind, mm -hmm. and then I just simply clip them to some cards. Now, you've probably seen this before. Of course. This, this but, has been around forever. You know, sometimes, though, we forget those simple things, and we start trying to figure out, oh, what can I do to display the cards with? But this is perfect. Well, I liked just simply taking regular clothespins. Remember those little itty-bitty clothespins yeah. I used to have? I love those. <laughs> well, what I did is I just took a regular clothespin. Uh -huh. I tied a gold bow. Now, I have kind of a theme in my house this uh -huh. year of gold for my holiday Ooh. decorations. So it's just that simple. How perfect. Clip on a favorite little card like this, uh -huh. and then I can hang it on. Voila. Yeah, so it's, Voila. it's just a fun, easy way, and you can add your own personal touch, mm, like definitely. whatever color you have for your theme. Mm -hmm. Now, I really adore this idea. With the charger and the clear plate, you could really set a festive table with a different card at every place setting. Or if you had good intentions one year, you bought a lot of cards, but <laughs> you didn't actually send them out, hmm. you could have matching designs. <laughs> Great idea. Idea. Well, it's fun to use the beautiful motifs that they have, motifs, 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 yes. motifs, motifs mm -hmm. that they have from greeting cards. And I was thinking you could decoupage a lot of fun things with them. You could. Or just do what we did here and not even attach it. Just lay right. it in there and that way that. The, it's usable after the holidays for something else. Right. You can put it on a candle. Great idea, Catherine. Now, we've all seen the box maker gift boxes before, but this is a great way to make some gifts. You're not spending mm -hmm. any money because it was a card that you got last year. Right. You can cut a new bottom. I just actually used the original card, mm -hmm. and it has the sweet message on it. How so nice. that's a fun idea. And it's All simple right. to do, because you can always use just the bottom of it for the back of the card. Yeah. This is fun. Great idea. Well, Patty. You know, I'm, I'm waxing nostalgic here. <laughs> okay. That's what Christmas is all about. <laughs> it wouldn't be Christmas at the Tidwell house if my mom didn't take all the current Christmas cards and make a huge Christmas tree Aww. on the door in the living room. That's a great idea. Yes. And the way she does it, she tapes each one so you can still look open and see. Them. Yeah, you can still open them sure. and see who they're from. One year she kind of threw us for a loop and she made a big wreath on the door. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, a big <laughs> wreath. That's but, a good idea, too. And, you know, 
oh, you probably do this, but the thing that's fun about this is it can be a tradition that mm -hmm. you can start in your family. Right. And, and it's simple, but it's a lot of fun, and it's a great way to honor all the people that like to share their holiday greetings that's with you. Right. Now, I always put mine in a big basket on the fireplace, and so whenever you're sitting there roasting your marshmallows or what have you, you can just sit there and go through the, the box. I think you're supposed to roast chestnuts cards. at Christmas. Well, those are good, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is kind of a cute idea. This is a, a, a gift box that I had. It was just plain gold. There was chocolate in it, but, well, Ooh, it's yum. gone now. <laughs> and this was a design from a card. I simply cut it off, mm -hmm. and now I have a decorative gift box. You probably thought that was a box maker box. How nice. How about this one, Patty? Yes, we all do this, but we forget. Yes, and instead of spending money on gift tags, mm -hmm. oh boy, I cut those kind of crooked, you can just make your own. Mm -hmm. And, you know, usually, they use, most people write on this side of the card, so you can have nothing on the back, or you can glue it down and write to Patty, love Catherine yes, on there. Yes, I like that idea. Right, so save your <laughs> Christmas cards. Who knows what creative solutions we'll come up with next time. Coming right. up next, Tony's going to be here with the Aline's Craft Club. Stay tuned. Do you spend hours knitting or crocheting gifts for your favorite people? Since it took so long to make it, don't you want them to enjoy it for as long as possible? Why not give them the care label from the yarn to ensure proper care for the lifetime of the project? You won't believe all of the tremendous value inside the Aline's Craft Club. And Tony is here today to take a look at it with us. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. We're going sh to share today some of the, the features of the Craft Club that are, that are just great for our members. They really bring a lot of value. The Craft Club has come a, a very long way since I was first involved with the show, and it was a big stack of pink brewers all jumbled up in an envelope. We have this lovely format and a lot of new behind-the-scenes things, too. Right. If you remember, the original thing for Craft Club was to make it really easy for the viewers to get all of the SASEs in one package, right? in one thing. So, um, you know, if you could, I think we figured it out once, if you actually sent for every SASE every month that's like $75 in postage and up plus all the envelopes and, and the extra work. Now we've, we put it all together in one publication and they get everything. Then we've added a whole lot of other membership features to it some coupons and a lot of, of, of editorial features to it. You know, speaking of coupons, we have 12 different coupons this month, and the values are so exciting. $10 off on the Quick Crafter, $10 on the Favor Maker, as well as a variety of from $3 to $6, lots of $5 coupons. This is, this is just chock full of value. There's over $75 in coupons in this month's Craft Club, and, and each month we change them and there's something new. That's great. And these all reflect things that they've recently seen on the show, so right. these are exciting values. There's other things that I'm very excited about. Tell me about crafts from the past. Uh, every month there's a feature in there about some crafts from the past. You know, Lean is, is, has like the best archive of craft uh, memorabilia that I've ever seen. Yes. And we go back sometimes five years, ten years, twenty or thirty years even, and find crafts from the past. In November we're doing um, what used to be called gold leafing, which now we're doing, we're using foil, the crafting foil, to duplicate that same look since the gold leafing has become so expensive. Right. We can duplicate that on a much, it looks the same, but it's a lot less expensive. And they've got a project in there where they're going to, it's a Christmas project, they're going to teach you how to gold foil on Plaster Paris. Oh, I love that. That sounds great. Now, something I am very excited about are the bread dough roses, and they're really bringing that back, aren't they? Right. Now, every month, and this was a request of, of our viewers, our members, to actually do a different bread dough flower every month. So we started a couple of months ago, and this is going to go through like mid-2000. So for like another year, we're going to have a different flower every month. In November, I'm not sure what the flower is. In September, it was the pansy. Mm -hmm. Well, what I like about this are the, the, the quality of the instructions that you're getting. You're getting step-by-step -step kind of a blowout view of how to put these flowers together. And this is very valuable, especially if you're someone that likes to create jewelry or put accents on anything without spending hardly any money. And bread dough is such a simple project, but if you don't have the how-tos on these flowers, you can't get that real elegant uh, porcelain-like result. And these pictures and step-by-steps are going to take you right through that, pro that process. And once again, all of the great things about the Craft Club are because we have been listening to you and you have shared with us your questions and what would make this work better. Something that I'm excited about is exclusively yours. Right. We, st that, we started that a couple of months ago, and that's where you're, you're going to... We've actually done it in some of the other segments where we take viewers' projects and put the actual viewers' project into the Craft Club. Okay, so that's a great way... This month's way. cover. 
is a viewer's project. So this is a wonderful way for your artwork or your design work to be seen in the craft club and you can really be honored for being a very creative person. Right, and what we ask them to do is send in a photograph of the design they want us to consider and then we'll, we'll judge the photographs and if it's something that we want then we'll take and we'll, um, we'll call them and then we'll, we'll get them to send us the project and we'll photograph it and write the inst instructions for it and put it in the craft club. They would get $50, a $50 gift certificate if their project is picked or they could choose to have a, a $15 gift certificate and three months membership in the craft club. Oh, wonderful. And all of that just for, just for doing something that you do every day, which is design. Mm -hmm. Right, and get, you know, get your project in print and, and maybe even on, on the show. So many great things about the Craft Club. What about the show schedule? The show schedule is in here too. Um, I won't try to flip to it in the, <laughs> the limited time we have left, but in every single month, because you should get this right at the very beginning of the month, so you can actually look at the show schedule in advance and see what's going to be on that day by segment and see if it's crafts that particularly interest you. I have to say, Tony, I am very impressed. You really know inside and out what's in the Aliens Craft Club. I've been there since the beginning. <laughs> That's great. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Coming up next, we're going to draw today's Watch and Win winner. Stay tuned. Create unusual embellishments on wearable art, home deck items, quilting, and much more using a simple bobbin technique. Simply wind silk or organdy ribbon on your bobbin, then drop into built-in bobbin case. Sew fabric right side down and voila, a masterpiece with Elna. Are you ready to win a prize? Because if you send in your postcard, you just might win this great prize today. Oh, you're going to love this. Today, <laughs> the What's Win prize is the Rainbow Sponge and Inks Get Acquainted Kit, a $14.99 value. Ooh, I'd sure like this one. All right, me too. Who's the lucky winner? Do I winner? get to draw? Sure, Patty. Okay. Ding, 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 ding. I feel it. I feel oh, it. Boy. Here it comes. Oh, oh, it's a smiley face. <laughs> it's from Dorothy Widzinski. Oh, what a cute name, Dorothy. From Depew, New York. All right, Dorothy, give us a call anytime at 1-800-825-3363 to claim this cool watch and win you prize. You are going to love this. <laughs> now, tomorrow on the show, we have some cute fabric gift bags. And we're going to make custom envelopes from recycled gift wrap. We'll also craft for our pets. Ooh, that'll be fun. Yeah, we'll <laughs> see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> Bye-bye.